What we're going to be looking at here is just a summary of the accounting treatment for various costs incurred subsequent to the acquisition of capitalized assets. And what we're going to be looking at here is property and plant and equipment and what we mean by subsequent to the acquisition. That is, once the uh, plant gets running here and in, in normal operation, then these are the costs that may be incurred here after it, the startup is completed here on this, on our plant here. So let's just go and we'll scan through this list here and then we'll come back and look at it in greater detail and make some definitions. So uh, again, summary of costs subsequent to the acquisition here of property, plant, and equipment. What we're going to be looking at, what we consider here, we'll be considering our additions here, and then improvements and replacements, and then rearrangements and reinstallation here, and then over here, repairs here. So we got four different categories that we are going to be looking at here in these costs that are subsequent to the acquisition here. And first for additions here, let's just go through this here. Uh, this is where a new asset is created here. So you'd capitalize the cost of the addition uh, to the asset account. So you just set up an asset account for this addition and then you would uh, capitalize it here. And then for improvements and replacements, let's first go and look at what we're talking about here. Again, the addition is where a new asset was recreated here, but for we we'll look at our improvements here and replacements. An improvement is the substitution of a better asset for one currently used here. And a replacement is the substitution of a similar asset for the one currently used. So the question that we have to deal with here, does the expenditure increase the future service potential of the asset? or does it merely maintain the existing level of services? So let's go just look at our accounting treatment back here for improvements and replacements. Uh, first case here where the carrying value is known, you just remove the cost and the accumulated depreciation of the old asset off your books here and recognize any gain or loss at that time, and then you would capitalize the cost of the improvement or the replacement. Now in the case here where the carrying value is unknown, Number one here, if the asset's useful life is extended, then you would debit the accumulated depreciation for the cost of the improvement or replacement. Uh, what, what we're doing is here just reducing the accumulated depreciation account here. Now number two, if the quantity or the quality of the asset's productivity is increased, then you'd capitalize the cost of the improvement or the replacement to the asset account. So there you'd be using setting, uh, in, increasing your asset account here. Now number three are looking at rearrangements and reinstallation. So let's first go and look at what we're talking about here. A rearrangement and reinstallation costs are incurred to benefit future periods here. So we're going to be we're going to be looking at benefiting future periods here. So back to our rearrangement and reinstallation here accounting treatment. A if the original installation cost is no one account for the cost of the rearrangement or reinstallation as a replacement. Uh, the carrying value would be no. And what we're talking about, let's just go back up here again. What we're talking about is a replacement here. And then you would follow these rules, rules here. Now, that's for if the original installation cost is known. Now, let's look at B here. If the original installation cost is unknown and the rearrangement or reinstallation cost is material, in the amount and benefits of future periods, you capitalize it as an asset here. Number three, if the original installation cost is unknown and the rearrangement and reinstallation cost is not material or future benefits are questionable, then you would expense the cost when it's incurred. Okay, now going to our last uh, category here, repairs. And let's go and look at what we're talking about here. Uh, we're going to have ordinary repairs. That's where you maintain the plant's assets in the operating condition where the current period is benefit. That would be the current period here. And that's generally with uh, looking at uh, the yearly period here. And then you'd have major repair. Uh, that benefits several periods. That would be several years or 
accounting cycles, whatever. Now, the thing is you have to distinguish between a repair from an improvement or the replacement here. And the major consideration is whether the expenditure benefits more than one year here or operating site, whichever is longer here. So if it uh, is greater than a, uh, um, a year here, you generally think the repair is short term and that benefits the current period here and improvements or replacements uh, are encompass a number of years here in the future. So let's go back and look at our repairs here again, how we account for those. Number A, if it's an ordinary repair here, that you would expense the cost to the repairs when they're incurred. Now remember the ordinary repairs just maintains the plant's operate, op assets here in operating condition. Now B here, major repairs. That's as appropriate, treat as an addition, an improvement or a replacement. Now remember the major repairs that benefits more it's beyond one year it benefits several years or in a number of years here in the future and when we talk about the additions and improvements and replacements we would go back and look at those. So we'll scan through this list one more time here so if you want to just look at it here. Additions okay you can see that here how we handle that now our improvements and replacements we had to if the carrying value was known we handle it in this fashion if the carrying value is unknown then we handle it in this fashion here now again for rearrangements and reinstallations well we have to know here whether the original installation cost is known here or whether the original installation cost is unknown and then we'd handle them differently and then we also have the case here where the original unless un, original install cost here is unknown uh, but the cost is material here in the uh, is not material excuse me here or the future future benefit is questionable versus the uh, case here where it's unknown this is where the reinstallation cost is material here and we'd handle it that fashion so make that uh, just to clear up those two items here so that takes care of our summary of our accounts here in a treatment for the various costs incurred subsequent to the acquisition here of capital assets.